Hi everyone. In this video I just want to show you how to calculate real variables um, using the consumer price index as a measure of the price level. And really there's nothing special about the consumer price index in this example. It's just one that people commonly use. It's useful in some contexts. In this context I'd say it's the right price uh, level to use. But there might be other contexts where you want to use a different uh, measure of average price of goods and services. But in any case, we're going to use the Consumer Price Index in this case. And what we're trying to do is calculate the real value of hourly compensation for uh, this is non -product or the production non-supervisory uh, workers inside the United States. So if you look at the nominal value of um, hourly compensation for non-supervisory production workers in the United States, it was $2.53 in 1964, and that rose all the way up to $19.76 in 2012. Now you might say, hey, that's a huge increase in the amount that uh, these workers are working each uh, year, or each hour. I mean, it's not quite nine times higher, well it's actually about eight times higher, or not quite eight times higher, so you might say, hey, that's a huge increase. Well, it turns out it's not really going to be um, that big of an increase when you correct for increases or changes in the consumer price index or average prices. So what we're looking for here is we're looking to calculate a measure of real uh, wages. Now, real values, or real variables, in general, the real value of x is just equal, in the sum time period, is equal to the nominal value of x times the ratio of the prices. The prices in the base year divided by the current price level. Now, in the past, uh, or in the previous examples we've done, we've always had the base year be 100. Um, so, with the consumer price index, that would be the period 1982 to 1984. That makes uh, understanding what's going on here a little bit more complicated, because what we want to be able to do is express um, the real value of wages in prices that you're familiar with. And so oh, you were all live in 2012, you all bought goods and services, you have some sense of how just how expensive uh, things were in 2012 and how and what a uh, wa real wage of $19.76 actually bought you in 2012. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and convert nominal wages from 2000 in six, or 1964 into real wages in 1964. So here, the, since the base year is going to be 2012, we're going to multiply by the price level in 2012. This will be um, uh, the price level in 1964. This is the nominal wage in 1964. And this is the real wage in 1964. Okay. Well, this is just one equation in one, two, three, four unknowns. If you know any three of the unknowns, you should be able to very quickly and easily go ahead and calculate uh, the f uh, fourth unknown. Well, it turns out we know nominal wages in 1964 are $2.53, so I can just go ahead and put that there. I know the price level in 2012 is 229.604 which basically means prices are 129.6% higher in 2012 than they were during that 1982 to 84 period. And the price level was 31.038 in 1964, which basically means the average price of the fixed basket of goods was actually cheaper in 1964 than it was in the 1982-84 time period. Well, if you go through and you do the calculations, you're going to go ahead and find out that the real wage was $18.72. And so the real wage in 1964 was $18.72. And now, if you go through and you take the time, so actually let me put real over here since we don't really have, we don't really have that much room, but I think you'll get the idea, 18.72. That's supposed to be a 2. All right. If I were to go ahead and do the calculation 
for what's the real wage in 2012, most of you will see instantly what it's going to be. But um, for those of you who can't just see it, I mean, let me just go ahead and do it. So the real wage in 2012 is just going to be the nominal wage in 2012 divided by the price level in the base year. Now the base year here is 2012 divided by prices in the current year, which are 2012. So what we have is a nominal wage of $19.76. The price level in 2012 is 229.604. The price level in 2012 is the exact same thing. And, oops, i got to erase this. Notice these price levels cancel and you're just left with $19.76. Remember what I said before, it's no accident. Real, the value of a real variable and a nominal variable should be exactly the same in the base year. Mathematically, there's no way around it. So what you see here is the real wage increased not much at all. I mean, it increased by a little over a dollar an hour. And you're talking almost 50 years. That's an extremely slow rate of increase in hourly real wages. But again, these are just for a subset of the workforce. It's for the non-supervisory production workers. It doesn't take into account changes in hours of work. And it also doesn't take into account some other forms of compensation, such as health care costs and that type of thing. So this just shows you how to calculate uh, the difference between real and nominal wages. And in principle, if you think back to how we did the calculation for real versus nominal GDP, we used a very similar formula. And so what you should be taking away from this is anytime I ask you to calculate a real variable from a nominal variable in the price level, you're using exactly the same formula. It's the real variables, the nominal variable times the ratio of the prices. And the price um, level in the numerator is the price in the base period and the price level in the denominator is the price level in the current year. And that's it. Now, I don't care if I'm asking you to calculate real GDP, real consumption expenditures, real government expenditures, etc. You would use this formula. Now, here's the one caveat. This is the formula you would go ahead and use if, you, um, if what you cared about was expressed in dollars. If what you care about is expressed in percentage points, such as the distinction between nominal and real interest rates, or nominal in well, we'll get back to interest rates, real and nominal interest rates, then you have to use a slightly different formula. And that one's discussed in one of the later videos.